Coach, um, what's the, what's the uh, plan here for the open practice today? What do you all want to try to do and show the fans and so forth? Well, you know, it's a little bit different scenario. Normally you have these uh, about a week before your preseason game. It actually times up pretty well for us. It'll be a normal training camp practice. You know, we just played a preseason uh, game a couple nights ago. So, you know, it, there's no need for a mock game. We, we got training camp work to do. And like any time we come out here, our goal is to get better. Rehabbing every day, uh, working. Again, that's why I don't get predictions, and I'm not a doctor. But uh, he's in there every day working. I mean, last, last week you said that you felt you're hopeful. That you were hopeful. Has that but changed at all? We'll see. It's about the same. Oh, one thing, too. Brian Edwards won't be here tonight. Um, him and his fiance, they had, they had a baby today. He'll be back tomorrow. So, Anyone else not? Is anyone coming back from yesterday? I'd be about the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Coach, uh, yeah. Bernhardt the other night catching a TD pass. How is he? Obviously, it's kind of an interesting story of where he's coming from. How, how has that development been, and, and, and how difficult is that transition? I know he's played some football, obviously, but yeah, coming from a, a totally Bernie? different sport. You, you mean Bernie? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like a lot of guys, you know, we've got Avery Williams playing running back now and guys at Felipe playing tight end and – and Bernie's a good job. He was an option quarterback in high school, was recruited to, to be an option quarterback, obviously went on to Maryland and played lacrosse. And uh, they went to Ferris State last year, won a national title. And so he's adapting quickly and um, hopefully continues to progress. I mean, so far it's been, uh, it's been pretty uh, eye-opening to see how quickly he's made that transition. I'll give him credit there. The other night, you can just see his spatial awareness as he went to go box a guy out at, at the top of the route. So I'm excited to keep working with him. Coach, I know one of the things that you talked about is just making sure that you guys are clean in terms of minimizing the penalties. What's right. your thought on how you guys did that on Friday and kind of how you can work, continue to work through that throughout the postseason? Yeah, abso yeah, absolutely. Um, wasn't perfect, but it wasn't. we didn't have a ton of penalties, uh, which gave us a chance. Uh, there's always things we, you need to clean up. The biggest thing we try, you know, pre-snap, there's things that we can control, and we try to minimize that, and uh, we'll continue to work on that. But, you know, like I said, it was a good thing we didn't have a million penalties coming out of that game. Coach, you uh, talked about how a lot, a lot of guys, you see a lot of guys flash and practices throughout early on in training camp, but and you, go, you hope to see it kind of transfer over to the game. The D. Offer was a guy that's kind of flashed during right. training camp. How do you help those guys not necessarily get complacent with that and kind of work with them so they can kind of stack those games on top of each other? Well, I mean, you'd hope nobody get complacent. So that's what the competition does. I mean, you get to a point where you want, you want that competition every year. Um, you know, our goal is not to sit there and reward guys and, and have them stop working. I mean, and it's the same with, with myself. I mean, I got a job to do, and that's what I was hired to do. So I, I don't have any concerns there. And uh, Tyler Azier really showed off the pass blocking skills. How, like, is that normal for you to see a rookie running back coming in that with showing off that type of skill set early on? Well, I think all those guys, I mean, they, they know that's a big part of the game and an adjustment from, from college depending on what they've been asked to do. And, and you get into third downs, there's, there's certain looks they, and the speed they haven't seen before. So it was a good first step. But like, like all the rookies, there's stuff to work on. And, um, I know he's getting a lot of credit for it probably just pulled up the one highlight right yeah so yeah two I'm glad you maybe we'll get you in our meeting room make sure you're uh, we're grading it right but in all seriousness um please so far with him Arthur it's a it's a training camp practice tonight but what do you want the guys to get out of the experience of being here in the building yeah. in front of fans well it's a good, good question I mean one thing we, we got to do a better job of is we got to take pride in being here we got to make this place a tough place to come and play and uh we need to win at home, and, and, but we got to do our part. And so we want guys to be familiar with the stadium, and, and we're thankful to have this practice here tonight. Arthur, with the amount of joint practices you have coming up, those generally have a little bit different level of intensity. How do you balance that with these types of practices now? Yeah, I mean, it's part of your job every day is to get in the right mindset to come to work. But, you know, I think this helps, you know, when you, you – you get to a rhythm the first couple weeks of camp, and then it kind of breaks. You go into the first preseason game, and now it's, you know, we're going to sit here, kick off 
next week on Monday Night Football, so it's good to change up the time you're practicing in a different environment. Hopefully that gives you a little different energy, but the focus has to be intentional every time you go out there, purposeful. You, you've moved to afternoon practices now here and there, tomorrow's afternoon practice. Well, what, is there a reasoning behind that? Have you or checked our schedule? I have. We've got a lot of one o'clock kickoffs, right? Yeah. I, Sometimes I the answer is really simple. Well, no, but, I, but some coaches do it for different reasons. That's why I was just trying to I just gave you mine. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Try uh, to be practical. When you look at it, what, how AJ has improved, or, or how you've seen AJ grow, where do, have you seen the biggest growth from him so far this year? Oh, you know, I think um, his awareness, you know, that's why you can get into the, a lot of these stats and there's certain covers that you can play um, where you can almost dictate the ball's not going to go there. But uh, I think he's showing he can play in more different, in different type of coverages that, the, that we're asking him to do. Certainly maybe certain times we may ask him just to match up on a certain player. But I think his awareness, the more he plays, the more familiar he is with our scheme. And, and we've pushed him. And he, he's... There's a lot of different jobs he's doing that we may not have asked him to do last year. Coach, is there, uh, can you give us an update on how D'Angelo Malone is uh, coming along in camp for you guys? Like a lot of rookies, um, I appreciate the way, you know, he, he brings it every day, but they got a lot, a lot of room to grow. But uh, pleased with D'Angelo and again, some of the jobs we're asking to do, they're foreign to him. So that's why I don't make snap judgments, but I got a lot of faith in D'Angelo. I was talking to Dean yesterday, and he made the comment that he felt like Michael Walker was really stepping into his own in terms of commanding the defense. How do you feel like he exemplifies that even this early in the preseason? I think he's um, obviously he's got more confidence um, in that position, and you hear him at practice. I mean, that's what we push the guys to do. Great defenses are usually got guys that are great communicators, whether you're in football or in basketball, and so you're – you hear him out of practice, and it's not this noise. Uh, what, what he's saying makes sense, and so we're going to continue to push that, and hopefully he can grow into some, some sort of a leadership role there. Yeah, Coach, um, just down the week here a little bit uh, with Wilson out, would it be good that you all get to see a veteran like uh, Joe Flacco who's been around the block a little bit for the young defense? I mean, there's advantages. I mean, Every quarterback we face, there's different challenges D led. So um, we'll see what, see what they throw at us when we go up there and practice against them. But it doesn't matter. I mean, that could change the first snap of the game. You've got to have contingency plans. Coach, for Arnold KT, when he started the game, there was maybe that one drive where it's kind of off a little bit, but really it seemed like he reset so quickly and had a pretty solid rest of the game. What does that mean to have a rookie just have that kind of mindset where maybe if he doesn't kind of get it right on that first drive or that first try, he then picks it up and just kind of pulls away that rest of the yeah, game? Yeah, I mean, a big part of sports is, especially professional sports, can you handle failure because it's going to come at you. So um, very pleased with the effort of a lot of those young outside linebackers or rush players. I thought Jalen Dalton did a nice job, AK, D'Angelo, Quentin, TQ. Um, we'll just continue to try to get – improve these guys and, and continue to work, but pleased with what AK did. Arthur, Charles London was saying yesterday that one of your messages to the team, I guess it was Sunday, which is yesterday, was that you didn't want ego to creep in, and you were talking a little bit about ego. What were you trying to get out there for your players? I'll keep that private. Maybe we need to have, uh, you guys are going to keep going to Charles for quotes. I guess Josh isn't here to get Charles again, so I'll keep our internal messages internal.